This color is not the best, but we're gonna work with it. We're gonna work with it. Then the dogs start barking again. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Every time I do something like this, I'm gonna get my notebook so I can see the prompts, the title of the prompts, and stuff like that. <laughs> Well, hello, fellow Martians, and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Promptober, and I will answer questions about my publishing path, which is hybrid publishing. So, hello, fellow Martians, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hello, I am Nicole, I am a Martian, and this is the Martian headquarters. A quick disclaimer, if the color of this video is different, I apologize, I am using a new phone, so I am still working on how to make the quality better with this camera, so yeah, but we're gonna work with it. <laughs> the color of this camera is not gonna stop me from putting out this video. Yeah. <laughs> Week 2 for October has ended and it is time for me to give an update on my Promptober progress as well as my writing, my reading, and other stuff and then we're going to answer some questions at the end. Hi Gabby! What's going on? What happened? Let us start with our Promptober updates, shall we? Okay, so Promptober Day 4, the prompt was Joyful Delta Day by Larry Norman and I wrote 301 words. The prompt for day 4 was a bit of a challenge because the song was a literal gospel song. So I really had to be creative with that. At the same time, I need to be careful with what I'm writing. <laughs> prompt number day 5, the prompt is All the Way Home by Larry Norman. I wrote 254 words for that day and it was both easy and hard because it was based on personal experience but at the same time it was hard because I had to go and look back on something about my past which is something I've been trying to avoid but it looks like with writing I cannot avoid doing it. <laughs> for prompt over day 6, the prompt is Everybody Loves a Nut by Johnny Cash. I wrote 270 words. This prompt was a fun one. <laughs> I was listening to it, it's like a nursery rhyme and I and the note on my sheet for this song was literally have fun with this song and I'm like well I put it there for a reason and I guess this one the one the, the one that I wrote for prom for Bris day six it looks like it's going to be something else I'm not sure what it is but I feel like it will be a different story it's not gonna be that light-hearted at the end but that's where your imagination takes you if you just say have fun with this song. <laughs> prompt over day 7, the prompt is Giver of Life by The Archers and I wrote 285 words for that. I have nothing to say for this prompt. I wasn't, it wasn't a challenge and it wasn't that easy. It was just, it was just the right amount of, uh, of brainstorming that I did before I was able to write. On October day 8, the prompt was I Really Got the Feeling by BJ Thomas. I wrote 250 words. Nothing to comment as well for this one, um, because it's a, it's a love song, so I immediately got into the groove of this song and it was easy to write something out of it, so yeah. Promptober Day 9, the prompt was Ricky Tiki Ta 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 by Austin Roberts. Yes, that is the title. <laughs> I wrote 101 words for that and the reason why I only wrote 101 words, the reason why I only wrote 101 words for Day 9 is... I felt like I lost the fire for this challenge and I realized at that day that I was only doing this because it's a challenge. I am not enjoying it like I was enjoying it the first few days but I was continuing it because I wanted to do this challenge. I wanted to complete it so yeah I was feeling that way. Next is Promptober Day 10 which is Can I Get To You From Here by Benny Hester. I have nothing to say about this one as well because I wrote this today. This is Saturday. I wrote this uh, this afternoon and I'm gonna upload this video in a while after I edit it. Um, so yeah, I don't have anything else to say for day 10. Everything just, you know, went on slowly. So for my writing update, I wrote a total of 1,561 words for Promptober for Promptober only. I also continued the draft of Product Tessa, which 
last Wednesday. And Project SOH is the sequel to Project IOH. And it's so happy and refreshing to be able to write something else other than Project IOH and the prompts. For my reading, you guys know, of course, I read Cache Warren's Penelope's Curve. So if you haven't read it yet, go ahead and read it, please. Her short story link will be in the description down below. So you better check it out and leave a review. Send her your reviews. She will appreciate it so much. Now we got that part out of the way, let us proceed into the question part, which is about my publishing path, which is hybrid publishing. Let's go on to the questions of the hybrid publishing path. Now, before we continue, these questions are actually from the self-publishing panel for the Author 2 Virtual Writing Retreat. I was part of the self-publishing panel, however, on the day of the panel, I had an emergency that I cannot, I cannot ignore, and I explained everything to Kaylin, and I explained everything to all the members of the panel, and they were very, very understanding, so thank you guys so much. I also asked for permission from Kaylin if I could answer this on my channel, so I can make up for that day, and she said yes, so here we are. <laughs> so the first question is, why did you choose the hybrid publishing path? Here's the story. <laughs> I mentioned it in a video or in a podcast or in a live stream that my first option when I entered AuthorTube is self-publishing and that I wanted to be traditionally published so I would be a hybrid author. Now during this year, I got in contact with an editor from Good Novel and they were looking for writers to pay to write stories on their site. And I consulted with my writing friends, why am I called now? <laughs> because I have the freedom to publish my own paperbacks. I also have the freedom to write the stories that I want and the book cover is on me and everything else. But the rights for ebooks and audiobooks, basically the digital rights, are signed to Good Novel. And they told me, you're a hybrid author now. I can't believe I am a hybrid author and it's still surreal that I'm called as a hybrid author because I don't know, I, I guess I never expected for that to happen, but uh, the reason why I chose the hybrid publishing path is because the opportunity is open, I took it, and now I'm on this path. Questions 2-3, to three. I combined this in one question, what are the pros and cons of hybrid publishing? Well, for me, the pros are, of course, I'm able to write the stories that I want. The editors don't really have a say in what I want to write, so yeah, that's a good thing. I can also decide on what book cover I want for my stories and I will be the one to be able to publish my own paperbacks and hardbacks in the future. Basically the pros is I still have control over what goes inside the book, like the story itself. I have control over that. The cons for me for this one is the digital rights. <laughs> Um, the ebook and the audiobook rights are signed with good novels, so I cannot sell ebooks or audiobooks on my own. It has to come from them. There are also two kinds of contract with good novel, and I got, and I got the contract where I'm still able to post like on Wattpad and stuff like that. But I need to like make sure that my good novel is much more updated than the other sites because I am earning through them. So yeah, that's a cons. I cannot sell my own ebooks and audiobooks while on contract. All in all, it's a good thing I am enjoying what I'm doing right now with them and they're very very helpful with everything. Number four, what is your publishing schedule? This isn't a complete question, I just rephrased it. <laughs> publishing schedule. This is another pro of being a hybrid author. They're not pressuring me to have a certain deadline, so I'm forced to put my own deadline on myself and this is where I am struggling with. <laughs> For Project Tayo Witch, it is set. My release date is on February 2021. Now for the sequel, I'm still planning on how to do it because I am trying to sort out and I'm trying to discover how long I can write a book. because. Writing a new book, writing from starting from a blank page, isn't the same thing as re revising an already written story. I have to really, really work hard on this one. 
my plan was to at least finish Project Test Awage, which is a sequel in one month, so I can leave it alone for two to three months. Don't judge me, two to three months is the best distance I can have with my stories. So yeah, <laughs> I'm still working on my publishing schedule for my other books. But right now, I am focusing on time wage and I'm on a time crunch, so yes! <laughs> what is the highlight of my publishing journey? For me, the highlight of this publishing journey is I am able to write what I want and, and I don't have to wait for the literal release date of the book for others to read it. I can post the story on Good Novel if I think it's okay. I can post it on Good Novel if I see that the story can stand on its own. Um, so yeah, I don't have to wait for the release date for others to read it on a paperback or something. So that's been the highlight. And the highlight, one of the highlights as well is I got my first earning on Good Novel. It's not that big. But it's something, it's like a promise that I will be able to earn through the site. I've sent it to my mom. I believe I've sent it to my family as well via our group chat. I, I shared it to my husband. I haven't shared it like on my social media yet because I don't want to, you know, do that right now. I just want to be really, really thankful in private that I finally earned something for a good novel. And I'm very happy about that. Number six, if I can give one piece of advice as a hybrid author, what is it and why? Again, this isn't the literal question word by word, I just rephrased it. <laughs> when the opportunity of hybrid publishing came knocking on my door, I was really, really afraid of it. I didn't want to take it. I didn't want to change my publishing path plans because I was so settled with self-publishing. Um, but I talked over with my husband and I really prayed for a decision because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I have no idea what's going to happen, what will happen to my book. So the best thing that I did was I prayed and I asked for an answer. Not an immediate one. If the answer needs time before it comes to me, I'm okay with it. So I just continued to pray and to pray and to pray and you know just more signs came to me like the editor asked for a synopsis and for like five chapters and I didn't hear from her for at least a day or two and then when I heard back from her she said well we're giving you a contract so that gave me the confidence that she believes in my story this editor believes that my story can make it on the novel so that was answer number one and she said she's gonna now gonna pass it to like the main editors so they can debate if the story is worth the try and I waited for a few days again, I haven't heard anything, and then the contract came and it wasn't a contract that I was expecting because I was, I was expecting the other contract but it wasn't that and at first I was a bit disappointed because this isn't the contract that I was expecting um, but I showed it to my husband, I showed it to my parents and I asked them to help me understand what's within the contract so they explained everything to me and I was really disappointed and I didn't want to sign it because I wasn't happy that it, was, that it wasn't the contract that I expected. Um, so I talked it over with my parents and with my husband and they said one thing. What's important is they gave you a contract. That means they believe in the story. They know it has potential. Right now you can start with this contract and who knows maybe in the future they can give you the other one. So I prayed for it again, I prayed for guidance, and after three days, I finally signed the contract, I agreed to everything, and I started my journey on Good Novel. My advice is don't be afraid to take an opportunity, but make sure before you jump in, you ask people that you trust. If you, if you don't understand something with your contract, let them help you understand it. English is not my native language, but I understand English quite well. But when it comes to contracts, I hate it because it's like they have a different language. <laughs> so I really had to ask my parents about that. And that's my advice. Don't be afraid when the opportunity comes knocking at your door, but make sure that you have somebody else with you and help you understand what's in the contract. Double check everything, clear everything with the editor or something or with you know, the agent clear everything with them just so you know that you won't get scammed or you won't be on the losing end 
that's all I have for you today folks. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and let your thoughts be heard in the comment section below. My book, The Impact of Her, is available in Good Novel. The first eight chapters, I believe, are free to read and then the next few chapters are blocked and you would need coins for that. So if you want to give it a read, go ahead and Good Novel. Follow my trail on social media, everything is listed down below, so check it out. A big shout out to my patrons, Eva Wrights and Lauren, for being awesome, awesome people. I love you so much. All of you, I love you so much. And if your Saturday hasn't been good or you're on the wrong side of everything, let me tell you this. I'm rooting for you. I'm right behind you. You can do it. You are strong. And you wouldn't be where you are if you weren't. So I'm sending you all my love and my warmest hugs. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Stay safe, stay creative, and happy writing, my Martians. <laughs>